Let's go back to our compressibility factor Z for a gas. So we've defined this compressibility factor as the pressure times molar volume, V bar, over gas constant times temperature, so PV bar over RT. And for an ideal gas, this should just equal 1. But we know that most gases are non-ideal, especially at uh, high temperatures, high pressures, etc. So <clears throat> let's see what happens uh, if we go beyond that. We can, one way of expressing this would be to do a Taylor series. So we could have a coefficient, which we're going to call B2V, and that's going to depend on temperature, and that's going to deviate uh, with the changing in the inverse of the molar volume. So we've expanded a term that depends on 1 over V bar, and there's some coefficient here which depends on temperature. Then we can go beyond this, we can add another coefficient called V3, B3V, also dependent on temperature, and it's going to vary as the molar volume squared. And we can continue going on B. 4V, B5V, etc. So this type of an equation of state is called a virial equation of state. What we're essentially doing is we're taking a Taylor series in 1 over V. So we have a Taylor series in the quantity 1 over V bar. So we know as we do this, we're going to get a function which matches closer and closer uh, to the real value of Z as a function of V bar and as a function of T, and we'll get a better and better result for what this uh, compressibility factor will be. That's just the nature of how Taylor series works, and you'll get a better and better answer farther and farther from your expansion point uh, the further out you go. And our expansion point here just happens to be V bar equals uh, zero, that the molar volume is basically zero. So we can also express this slightly differently if we wanted to, this PV bar over RT. We could express that as a Taylor series of pressure instead, where we have 1 plus B2P of T times pressure plus a third coefficient times pressure squared, yada, yada, yada. And that would be a Taylor series in pressure in P. <clears throat> and these two are related uh, just by a simple algebraic transformation, that, uh, which is a just a multiplication or division by RT. But the point is we can express this in a Taylor series. And when we do this, we have this virial equation of state, and these coefficients are called virial coefficients. And so this B2V, as we might call it, we would call that the second, notice the two there, virial coefficient. Okay, so it turns out that this second virial coefficient uh, is actually quite important, and it's actually what determines it is going to be how uh, to any pair of the gas molecules interact with each other. So it's determined by the interactions between the molecules. Now we could define some function as a distance of how far these molecules are apart. We could say u of r, a potential energy function, and we could say that that equals just the interaction between a given pair of the gas molecules. So interaction between molecules. So this thing, if we were to graph it, we'd have U of R versus the distance between two molecules. And then it would have some functional form. It would do, you know, whatever it does, yada, yada, yada. But that's unspecified for now. All we know is that it has some functional form, and that is of interest to us. Okay, so if we know what this interaction function is, which we could uh, calculate by d 
detailed quantum mechanical calculations or we could estimate by some empirical rule or there's some way in which we would obtain this. But if we were to know this function, if we were to know exactly how two pairs of a given uh, gas molecules interact, say two argon atoms, two H2 molecules, etc., then we could actually write down an expression for what this second burial coefficient is. And that formula looks like this, that our second virial coefficient equals some constants, minus 2 pi times Avogadro's number, and then times the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus this function u of r, how the molecules interact, divided by the Boltzmann constant, kb, times the temperature, also on the denominator there, and then that minus 1, then this times r squared, all integrated over r. So really, this interaction function between a pair of, of two molecules is all we need to determine this second virio coefficient, and vice versa. If we know what this second virio coefficient is, we could back out a lot of information about what this type of... Uh, what this functional form looks like. Okay, so if we were to plot this versus temperature, there might be some temperature where we find that the second virial coefficient is equal to zero. And if it's equal to zero, then that gas is going to behave ideally at low temperatures. Now why is that? Well, at low temperatures, only the first only the first term in this Taylor series is really going to matter. So only the second virial coefficient is really going to matter until the until p squared or molar 1 over molar volume squared until those start to become significant and if these numbers are very small, then the square of them is going to be very small. So at at low pressures or at and at very high molar volumes, um, only the second virial coefficient is going to matter. So if it's zero, then the gas is going to, then the z, our compressibility, is going to be one, and the gas is going to behave ideally until these third virial coefficients start to come into play. And if you have a gas which has a temperature where this is true, so if you have a T such that your second virial coefficient is zero, then that is referred to as the boil temperature. Yep, the same boil from Boyle's law, the gas law. So that's all we're going to say about virial coefficients for now, and in the next video we're going to look about how they relate to some specific types of functional forms and uh, how our Van der Waals equation of state uh, is related to what this virial coefficient is.